Hello folks, Jason Crispin here at JC's Bees and it's a beautiful November morning. We're going to hit about 56 degrees today and I'm pretty excited. The downside is it's going to get dark today at about 5 o'clock and that's kind of a big downer. But it is what it is and uh, got to make adjustments um, just like you've got to and uh, it's going to affect all of us. It's going to take a little while to get used to this new time schedule. Today I wanted to throw out a little bit more information on the dribble method. Um, over the last week I've had some more experienced beekeepers send me some messages and uh, even comment in the last video and uh, I've learned a couple things and I wanted to point them out. And uh, what better way to do that than, than a video, right? So the very first thing I want to discuss is uh, in the comments of the last video somebody put my understanding is that the bees need to be well fed at this point when you dribble. And the answer is Yes, they should be well fed. Everything at this point should be taken care of. You should have your mouse guards on, your upper entrance open, um, any kind of insulation boards that you may use. I'll leave a video up here how I winter my hives and maybe that'll help. But at the same time, when you go to dribble, all of this stuff should be done. So yes, they should be well fed. Um, another thing I didn't point out in the last video was if the bees are on top of the frames spread out across the top, you need to smoke them and force them back down in between those seams of the frames. Um, dribbling right on the top of the frame doesn't count. It has to be right on the bees. So if you can get them concentrated in them seams, it's, the effectiveness is going to be a lot higher on dropping mites. So if the bees are all spread out across the top of the frames, use your smoker, smoke them back down in. Um, another thing I'd like to point out, you got two boxes, whether they're two 10 frames or two... Uh, nuke stacked on top of each other whatever they may be if you see that the bees are in the lower box what you want to do is probably get you a helper it's going to be the easiest method instead of lifting them boxes off um, get the helper to cock the top box back as you go along and uh, treat between the seams and then once you're done they can drop the top box back down throw the lids on you're done you move to the next one but the helper this can go pretty quick if you've got several hives i would also like to take and make note here that, uh, and I'll leave a link to this down in the video description, Randy Oliver says if bees are in both boxes, then he treats both boxes, even if it takes 100 milliliters. Um, that's kind of new to me, you know, because if you read the first article, it pretty much says 50 milliliters, and that's it per hive. But if you read this update, he comes back and specifies that if bees are in both boxes, cock the top one back, do the bottom one, set the top one down and do the top one. Simple as that. You want to get this uh, dribble serp on the bees, not on any woodware. It has to be on the bees. And yes, the bees do eat it. That's why it's critical that you use very accurate measurements when mixing this serp up. Um, you know, a lot of people resort to teaspoons to measure out the acid. That's not accurate enough for me. So that's why I suggested the scales. I'm simply suggesting the method that is most accurate. If you want to resort to using teaspoons, that's your own will, and you may do that. But just be warned, it could make your bees very sick if the measurement is off. Um, I had some people wonder why I dribble. Didn't you just treat for mites? Why are you dribbling now? And the simple answer for that is, you will never kill 100% of the mites in your colony. Your job as the beekeeper is to manage the mite level and keep it as low as possible. So keep that in mind. If you think when you treat for mites you're killing 100% of them, you're wrong. It's not happening. You're dropping it down to where there's just a very small percentage in the hive and the bees are able to do much better because, see these mites, they make the bees sick. They give them diseases and viruses and over the winter they just can't handle that. So the lower the mite level, the stronger the bees are. So with this dribble, what you're doing is you're going back in a month, month and a half after you've already done your fall treatment. And now the brood is all hatched out, which when the brood hatches, you know, any mites that's in those capped cells is going to emerge also. And that's going to up the population of mites after you treat it. So this dribble method is a way to go back in after everything is broodless, there's no more mites to hatch out. You dribble on the bees and you drop the mite level down. And that's going to stay down until probably spring before she starts to lay a whole bunch again. So that's going to make it so much easier for your bees to overwinter. 
having a lower mite count. If you treated a month and a half ago, let's say you used uh, oxalic acid vaporizer or you used mite away quick strips or the formic acid strips, whatever it may be, that is great. That is awesome. This is just a way to ensure to lower the mites a little bit more as this cold weather approaches. That's it. So this method is not to replace any kind of other treatment. It's just added insurance. So my hopes are is that this video, along with last week's video of the dribbling process, everything will be a lot more clear. If you still have questions, get down in the comments. Ask. Um, if I can't answer it, somebody will. Um, that's another thing I'd like to point out. Um, I'm noticing a lot of new names down in the comments section, and I think that's terrific. Um, my comments section has started to get very informative on its own. So if you've got a couple minutes after you watch these videos, go down and read over some of the comments. A lot of great tips and tricks down there that other beekeepers are using. So just something I thought I ought to point out. So if you like this video, throw me a thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please take time to do so. And make sure you click on the little bell symbol. That way you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching.